Hi, I'm Neil Cook. I'm CTO of CloudMark, and today I'm going to talk to you about two-factor authentication. Now, two-factor authentication is uh, a mechanism that's used to try to prevent uh, bad guys from stealing your credentials when you're logging into services, when you authenticate to services. So typically, um, you've got someone logging into like a bank's website. If you send your password and, and information here, then if someone has um, either uh, stolen your password or uh, has a way to intercept this communication in the middle here, there's a potential security problem. So the way that banks get around that and other financial services uh, institutions is to have something called two-factor authentication. So you have to log in as normal with your password, but then what happens is you also register securely another piece, uh, another way that you can be contacted, uh, typically via your mobile phone. And what happens is once you've logged in, you won't actually be able to access the bank's website until you get uh, something like an SMS message which is sent to your phone. Now this SMS message which is sent to your phone contains uh, additional piece of information which then you have to input through your web browser and then you can access the website. Now this is supposed to improve security because now uh, the attacker, you may have uh, access to this, uh, this link here or you may have your password but you won't have your mobile phones as well. So there's two pieces of information which is why it's called two-factor two authentication. Now this is all great but unfortunately, this has now been uh, compromised by attackers. I'm going to explain to you how that works. So, first thing is, um, if you're a user, you're accessing the website, you log into your bank's website as normal. Now, what happens is, unfortunately, people um, who are using the website are using a computer. A lot of people's computers have viruses on them. Um, and these viruses are getting much, much smarter. They're not really just trying to, uh, they're trying to hide, they're not trying to, to harm your computer, they're trying to steal money. Uh, and one uh, class of these viruses attacks two-factor authentication. Uh, there's one called Zeus, which is, which is a classic example. And what happens is, the virus on your computer detects when you're going to your bank's website. So, when you go to your bank's website, and it with, works with particular banks, uh, it's worked in, with banks in, uh, across Europe and Spain and Turkey and places like that. When it detects you, that you're going to your bank's website, it will actually pop up something on your screen which actually says, hi, we've got some uh, extra authentication mechanisms for you to do today. You need to download a piece of software to your mobile phone. And people just think that this is part of their bank's website security procedures. So they uh, type in their phone model, they type in their phone number, and they're basically giving all of the information to the uh, attacker uh, as to how to intercept their two-factor authentication. So what happens is then your phone gets an alert and this software gets pushed to your phone and people install the software on their phone and it's supposed to be security software from their bank. And now you had a virus on your PC here, now you've got a virus on your phone. Now, because they have a virus on your PC and on your phone, when you log into the bank and they send you the SMS to your phone, the virus on your phone intercepts that and now the attackers have got uh, your password, they've got a way to log into your account and they've got the code that was sent to your phone. So now the phone virus sends that to the bad guys. Uh, and the bad guys steal your money from your bank. And that's how two-factor authentication gets compromised. To stop two-factor two authentication uh, being compromised, the best thing to do as a user is to only ever do the things that your bank has told you that it will do. If anyone ever pops up a, a message on your screen that you're not expecting, don't follow the instructions on that pop-up, even if it might be legitimate. If you don't know about the uh, information that's being presented on your screen or you're not expecting it, then it's probably uh, malicious. If it's not, there's no harm in phoning your bank and letting your bank know, and they can tell you if that uh, piece of information or that pop-up is legitimate or not. And that way you won't fall for these kind of scams, which are relying on you thinking that your bank's trying to do something for you when it's really not.